Morning, sunshine. Good morning. Hey, Bambies. You do, and what would you say? I'll take down this tent while you get water boiling and Sure. Stuff. some nice weather cool mornings for sure cool evenings but beautiful sunny days fall colors all around us and mountains and just incredible scenery like this for example everything's just so cool around here you know a mixture of rugged uh, granite outcrops and oceanic vistas out into the Gulf of the St. Lawrence there's areas known for whale watching there's a beautiful little maritime-esque villages and farms. But uh, yeah, we're still headed for Labrador. And today we're gonna make it all the way to Bay Como. But first, we gotta jump on the ferry to cross the Saguenay River. Well, Tori and I are just in the Saguenay Fjord, um, boarding the ferry to cross the Saguenay River, and we're watching beluga whales. This is the most southerly, oh, oh there's tons of them out there. This is the most southerly area. Oh, there's another one, do you see them? Yeah, I'm seeing them. Oh my God, this is so cool. Yeah, and we're just watching beluga whales and their white backs come up like this. So this is the most uh, southerly breeding ground, mating ground for beluga whales. And this whole area is rich with uh, uh, whales.
ready for lunch. Lunch time. Lunch time. Have some cheese. I'm using the cold steel four max. Put some extra for honey. Lettuce from our own garden. Very exciting. And tomato also from our own garden. Mustard. Okay, and salt and pepper. Done. Say hi. Uh. <laughs> Thanks, honey. portion of our trip where we're following the Gulf of the St. Lawrence um, in Quebec's Côte Nord region and tomorrow we're going to start a new portion of our journey where we're going to head well off the beaten pass and head north onto the only road into Labrador continuing past Black Manicouagan and into Labrador the only road in Labrador so it is probably about five o'clock right now and uh, we've been on the road for about five five or six hours today with a good long lunch stop so looking forward to uh, hopefully having a beautiful campsite getting a bite to eat and just enjoying our time with the kids maybe get a bit of a fire too so He blew on it. things that happens with uh, some kids with Fox G1 syndrome which Wesley has is that they have digestional issues and it's tough because he's nonverbal so we don't really know what's wrong but we're gonna try to get some food in him and keep him warm and just snuggle him and try to just basically stay patient and take care of him as best we can it, it happens once in a while and it usually uh, usually gets better in uh, not too too long so we're hoping that's what's happening but 
He's a little grumpy right now. But other than that, things worked out great. We ended up uh, making it almost into Bay Como and went to this uh, campsite that we had booked, but it turned out to be kind of this trailer park right in the middle of a res residential neighborhood that wasn't, it said it was on the ocean, but there was a fence and we ended up like just turning around and driving away and then just driving down some back, back track, went down some back roads, found this old covered bridge and then wound up at a dead end road and Tori spotted out of the corner of an eye something that says uh, camping and then a phone number and we called it and a gentleman we met up with him he lives just I don't know down the street this way owns this property and came out didn't speak any English basically we speak very little French but somehow managed to uh, communicate pretty well with the guy really good guy uh, just got a, a moose with a bow just close to his property here and anyways I'm gonna feed Wesley and uh, hopefully calm him down a little but yeah adventure and we're we're super excited about it we just I had a feeling it was gonna work out eh Tor? Yeah. Rock stand Steady rock Wesley. We have some ground beef today that has thawed out all the other meat that we have is frozen so I'm gonna use up this ground beef I didn't really plan a recipe for it so I'm feeling a little unsure but I have these two sidekicks packages they're both cheddar I'm gonna cook up the ground beef and add it to okay. the macaroni and cheese <laughs> That looks pretty good. Looks like hamburger Sorry. helper. Oh. Hi, hon. Yeah. yeah, Mama and Huddy are gonna share. Yeah. Right? Mm, what do we have here, Mama? So this is, um, it's kind of like a macaroni and cheese with beef. Yeah. Yeah. The two um, sidekicks, which was hometown cheddar and then Chipotle cheddar. And then just cook some beef on the side and then just mix it all together. Perfect. And of course I had a parmesan cheese. What does a moose say? What does a moose say? Okay, be careful. Not right on Wesley's head. Is that funny, Wesley? Well, Tori started feeding Huddy. And I went to go grab some of Wesley's food out of the bin there on the front carrying rack. And as I stood up to unpack it, I looked out into the field behind us there and saw awesome northern lights and uh, long rolling green streaks in the air. And we even got a little red um, and purplish color too, just uh, with the Big Dipper right behind it absolutely beautiful so we got the ocean out here with a gorgeous moon to our south and to the north amazing northern lights so pretty cool thing to enjoy at uh, this perfect little private spot we found for really what's going to be the last uh, sort of stretch of our trip for a little while we won't be near the ocean anymore we're going to be going inland into truly wild uh, country will be all around us um, as we head into Labrador and along the Trans Labrador Highway. But yeah, this mountainous Coat Nord region we're going to leave behind us. So, what a way to spend our last night here and seeing the Northern Lights. Pretty freaking cool.
it is the morning of day four of our adventure. Now we're gonna drive back into Bay Como and then take the only long and lonely road into Labrador, which is an eight hour drive. Uh, today we're gonna stay at a place called Station Wapishka. Um, so we're, uh, the ocean's gonna be far behind us and we're heading due north. So um, uh, yeah, just things are gonna amp up in remoteness and um, gonna make sure that we're self-sufficient. We have all the things we need, uh, tire compressor, tire plug kit, a chain, good jack, a couple spares, a spare for the uh, the trailer and a spare for the truck, and uh, all the food and stuff like that. Extra gas, uh, we got jerry cans strapped to the roof racks of the trailer, so feel like we're prepared, reliable vehicle, but about as reliable as they come to say the least. And anyways, right now I'm going to uh, put a cell phone booster because we want to get a cell signal as long as possible because we want to share some you know, photos and little write-ups of this trip um, on our social media channels. Um, we do have an in-reach satellite texting device by Garmin, but when we use that, um, you can't post pictures. So we will be using that when we're really uh, way out of reception. But for now, we're gonna try to extend our cell phone life as long as we can. So yeah, I'm gonna show you this booster thing here. It's pretty cool. So this holds your phone. This is a magnetized aerial or antenna that goes on the roof. This here is the receiver, and this plugs into the cigarette lighter, if that's what people still call it. Huddy, what kind of discombobulation have you gotten yourself into? <laughs> 